Broadcasting live from the low energy shores of Lake Toronto, it's the Unseen Podcast. My name is Jeremy Friedman. And I'm David Tobias. And today we're speaking with actor, comedian, writer, producer, and back alley brain surgeon Mark Little about his incredible unmade slash unmakeable idea for a TV series. Real Deal Wrestling. But before we get to that fantastic Mark Little interview that we've got lined up, what is this podcast and who the hell are we? Yeah, those are great questions, and ones that I am actually capable of answering, because I know who we are. Who are we? Well, I we just said, my name is Jeremy Friedman. And I'm David Tobias. Sure, and uh, we're actually two old friends. We've known each other since high school, and now we are comedy writers. That's right. We're writing partners, partners in comedy crime, originally from Montreal, and here we are cast out into the, what did we call them, the low energy shores of Lake Toronto. And this podcast is about the best unmade and unmakeable ideas in film and television. For every horrible TV show or film idea that gets made, there are hundreds of brilliant ideas that don't. Yeah, and so this is a podcast about those ideas and the people behind them. They're the ideas that big screen doesn't want you to see, but they're often the best ideas out there. Yeah, so every episode we'll have exclusive chats with creatives about their favorite unmade or unmakeable film and TV show ideas. And we're talking A-list mega celebs here, people. We're talking Tim Cruise. Tim Hanks. Yeah, Lavender Johansson. Poppy St. John's. Uh, Brian Reynolds. Ryan Dennehy. Yeah, the names that you know and love, they're all going to be here talking about the best of their ideas that they weren't able to make for whatever reason. So we'll hear from screenwriters, we'll hear from actors, producers, comics, the ghosts of dead celebrities, and anyone else creating brilliant ideas for screens large and small. Yeah, and we'll, we'll find out why they couldn't make these ideas. You know, maybe they were too expensive to make or too risque or, hell, maybe it was just flat out illegal. Yeah, whatever the reason, every TV show or film idea on this podcast will have three things in common. None of them will have been made, all of them will be brilliant, and you won't hear about them anywhere else. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you know, David, you and I have come up with some crazy, unmakeable ideas, but uh, I figured today let's maybe share some that we we came up with separately. Uh, I've got an idea. I actually came up with uh, with an old friend of mine and former roommate, uh, Jordan Rosansky, about 11 years ago, 12 years ago. I don't know. I'm not doing math here. Uh, and the idea is called Super Space Bowl. It's basically like the movie Space Jam. In fact, it's exactly like the movie Space Jam, except instead of being basketball, it's football. And instead of starring Michael Jordan, it's starring O.J. Simpson. Uh, but the movie also takes place in, like, around 1993, you know, just before... Good O.J. Uh, yeah, yeah, good O.J., <laughs> before before bad O.J. emerged, allegedly. And so throughout the movie, O.J. is, of course, putting together a toon squad to beat the aliens. Uh, but he's also, you know, making comments about how his wife just really gets under, under his skin, and he's saying things like, Sure, Bugs, I'll take a stab at that. Or, like, Don't worry, Daffy, they'll never catch me. Wow. Um... Yeah. So in good taste. Exactly. Yeah, in perfectly good taste. And this is and this would be produced in the year 2023. <laughs> yes. It would start Starring, current day O.J. Yeah, Simpson modern day playing OJ. a younger version of himself. Wow. But no CGI. No CGI, no makeup. It's just he's a good enough actor that you go with him on that journey. It's a perfect example of an unmade slash unmakeable idea in that, as we said off the top, it's got those three boxes checked. Number one, it's never been made. Number two, it's brilliant. And number three, no one's ever heard of it before. This is the grand reveal on this very podcast. Yeah, and number four, it stars O.J. Simpson. But I think that kind of makes it more likely to be made because he's not going to demand star money at this point. Yeah, no, I, I, I get the feeling that he would do anything for, I don't know, you buy him like a couple beers or something. Yeah, some legal advice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea, like I say. I've got an unmade slash unmakeable idea. It certainly is unmade. I want to say it's not unmakeable. Here's the idea. Well, let's let the audience decide. It is a Japanese game show. You know those type of, like, ultra-violent Japanese game show? But, of course, it's all funny. People laugh at yep. the misfortune of others. Um, so it's a, it's a live 
audience Japanese game show where contestants are strapped into these like, kind of like torture devices, but it's all fun and games. Like It's like a guillotine, but it's a foam, let's say, blade instead of a real one, that kind of thing. Um, and they're strapped into these devices in front of a game floor, which is made of tiles. And in front of them on the tiles are all of these toddlers, these little babies, like infants, I should say. And the infants are crawling on these tiles and sometimes they can press certain tiles that trigger the torture machine so the audience is watching these really cute babies like oh look at how cute he is meanwhile behind them are these contestants who are strapped into these devices terrified and then out of nowhere that these babies will just randomly step on one of those tiles and then the foam guillotine comes down and it can be something a little bit crazier than a foam guillotine maybe maybe it is a real one you know well let's push the envelope as we yeah. say real real gu- guillotine yeah. foam baby that's right yeah and so that is my unmakeable idea. I've been toying, it, toying with it for several decades now. And one of these days, I'm just going to get on a plane to Tokyo and start pitching this thing right at the airport to whoever will listen to me. Yeah. You just got to figure out what the like child labor laws are there, the acting laws. I need a title, too. I thought bonsai, that's taken. Bulgogi, that's Korean. So I settled on bukkake. Yeah, that works for me. Perfect. So the format of this podcast is pretty simple. Every episode, we're going to hear from a mega celeb. We're going to do a nice little feature interview with them. We're going to talk about their unmade, unmakeable idea. We're going to learn about where they were in their careers at that time. It's going to be really fun. And then, best of all, these interviews are going to build towards something very special, Jeremy. What is that special thing? Sure. So our show is called Unseen because at the end of that interview, we're going to read a scene from their unmakeable idea. And sometimes this scene will be something that the guest has written. You know, the, these projects will come in in a variety of ways. Some are written but never produced, some are never written, um, etc. So if they've got a scene to read, that's great. We're going to read it. And if they don't, this is where I think the real fun comes in. David, you and I are going to write that scene for them, and we're all going to read it together and see what it comes out as. That from scratch, from yeah. scratch. Writing it from scratch, none of us can read, but we can write. Yeah. So basically this podcast is like a TV station uh, that only airs really, really good stuff that's pushing the envelope, that is wild, that's crazy, that's too expensive to get made, the stuff that you won't see anywhere else. And so that's what this show is. That's what you're listening to right now and what you're going to keep listening to for the rest of your life. But specifically, twice a month when we release new episodes, that'll be the first and third Wednesday of every month. That's right. That Wednesday is the best day to podcast. That's what uh, Google told me. And we will base every decision on this show on very flimsy, superficial evidence called from the internet. Exactly. And so that's what you're listening to. Today's episode will feature our guest, Mark Little, who came in with a great idea. He had scenes written already, so we're going to read something he wrote at the end of the episode. And it's a good one. I don't even want to spoil it too much by telling you more about it. No, we'll try our best not to spoil or alert anything on this show, but let's maybe frame it. It's a comedy series. It's called Real Deal Wrestling, and it combines uh, the usual situational comedy hijinks with... A brick-and-mortar wrestling league, a real wrestling league that Marx had planned to set up in real life with a sprawling cast of criminals and a lot of merch opportunities. Yeah, it's a really ambitious idea, but also just really silly and funny. And uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it, as we did, talking to Mark. Yeah, you're going to really enjoy this interview. But first, a word from today's sponsor, who is not a sponsor. Are you hosting a party and looking for something your chips can take a little swim in? Maybe you've got some nutritious veggies and you need to make them bad for you. Sounds like what you need is Dip Recruiter. Dip Recruiter is the only online marketplace that connects dipless losers with delicious dips. Spinach artichoke, creamy French onion, hummus or guacamole. Whatever you need, Dip Recruiter will connect you with the sort of solid, sort of liquidy sauce of your dreams. And it's super simple to use. Just download the app, create an account, verify your identity, complete your profile, sign back in with two-factor authentication, click always trust this device, enter your DIP preferences, enter your DIP allergy restrictions, create a custom avatar, invite your friends to join, and you cannot skip this step. Remind your friends about the invite waiting in their inbox, and then finally, pick your DIP. And in just two to four business days, your doorstep can be absolutely covered in queso or spicy black bean or my personal favorite, mystery dip. But that's not all. If you use our promo code UNSEEN, you'll get 20% off your first order. Not 20% off the price, just 20% less dip. But to make up for it, we'll include a sample size of a special dip 
David and I whipped up in our studio slash dip kitchen. So sign up for Dip Recruiter today, and you can be enjoying incredible dips as early as a few days from now. Mm-mm. Dip Recruiter's got the dips that make you drip. I think we're good on the mic. Level all seem all right. You've been listening? Sort of, yeah. Sure. I mean, but we're, it's not like we're Phil Spector over here. Yeah. We don't need well, to strive some for perfection. Well, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You guys can go full, full blown Phil Spector if you want. Yeah. Yeah, so, I would say just be careful on your lap that you don't, like, I don't know, have. Uh, if I feel like I'm moving it too much, yeah. I'll switch back to how you yeah. had it. Cool. Yeah, but all good. We're not here to make Abbey Road, you know, we're just here to make a cool little podcast. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, about the best ideas in film and TV that have never been made for yes. various reasons. Yeah, so. Uh, go back. Sorry, I fucked up. <laughs> I thought that this would be better, but I don't want this. No, get get comfortable. This. Yeah, I don't like this. Legs like, getting tired already? No. No, that's not it. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So uh, here we are. Welcome to the Unseen Podcast. Thanks for taking a flyer on this uh, little like hole in the wall podcast that we're starting. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be in this condo room. Yep. I love it. I love the size of the television. Oh, yeah. I love the vibe of the walls. Can you hear... Can you hear that elevator shaft? Is that an elevator shaft? I don't know what it is, but let's hope the audience can hear it. So, Oh, the, I mean, we'll be cranking yeah. that up. We mic that specifically so that we can crank up the volume. Also, I just want to be clear about something. When David said, welcome to the Unseen Podcast, we're spelling seen, S-C-E-N-E, mm-hmm. so it's a very clever pun, you see. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. very good. Yeah. yeah. We even reserved the Facebook page, so we're feeling pretty yeah. professional and sophisticated right it's now. very nice. Good yeah. job, guys. Yeah. So what's new and exciting in your life? Um, I, well, I didn't, this, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to quit smoking. That's a new habit and it's very exciting. Trying uh, to quit is the new habit or, or smoking is the new habit. Smoking is the new habit and yeah. then trying to quit is the brand new habit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, it's, it's an up and down experience. I started smoking at age 40. Smart. My current age. Yeah. Yeah. Very smart. And it is wild how quickly I got hooked. Yeah. I didn't think I would get hooked. What an endorsement for cigarettes, though. Oh, my God. They're so effective. Yeah. If you want something in your life that's so effective, that does exactly what people tell you it'll do, cigarettes. Yeah. Ah. All right. Once we're done this recording, let's all go outside and smoke a pack. Yeah. yeah. Brought to you by cigarettes. So how are you going about quitting? I'm Keep listening turkey. to the magic book, uh, Alan Carr's Easy Way to Stop Smoking. Okay. It's uh, People call it the magic book because it uh, you listen to it or you read it, and then by the end, you simply stop. Wow. Mm. And I don't think it works. It certainly doesn't work for everyone, but it has... Is, is it just like a book full of like lung cancer patients, or what exactly What's is What's crazy book? is, not to get really actually genuine about this, but... Um, he is anti uh, scare tactics. He says they don't work, and 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 it's anti the willpower method. He said that doesn't work because smokers are the most stubborn people, um, and all of those things just like rack their nerves and drive them further into cigarettes. The reason they smoke in the first place. He literally just uses. Uh, he just convinces you. Wow. Okay. Uh, he convinces you that all the reasons you're smoking, you're actually. Like what you say cigarettes are doing for you, the opposite is actually true. He just lays it out and he repeats it over and over and over again. And then apparently, and he encourages you to keep smoking throughout the book or whatever. And then by the, by the last page, you're supposed to just stop. And it worked for my girlfriend. She just stopped and she'd been smoking for like 10 years. How many pages you got left? I'm listening to the audiobook, so I've got like just over an hour left, and I'm okay, stressed. Yeah, get it, get them in there. I guess <laughs> yeah. Can, right? Yeah, but I had stopped smoking because I was having uh, panic attacks because of the nicotine. I just started having panic attacks, and they are the worst, <laughs> truly the worst experiences. I can't believe how bad they are. They're nothing like what I thought. They're the opposite of cigarettes in that I, I was not prepared for what they would do at all. Yeah. It's just been like full, it's been like a week of dementia. That's what I, it's not, I'm not panicking. I'm just like dissociating from my brain and, and I, and I feel like I have Alzheimer's disease. Dang. I, I sometimes have panic attacks, but not from nicotine, just from Jewish anxiety. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, I smoke Jewish cigarettes. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a little that shorter, a little fatter, the tips cut off. I get it. Yeah. Um, on the pack, instead of a woman with like bubbly lungs, 
It's just like an old Jewish bubby kind of mm. looking disappointed in it. Yeah, me. so they're yeah. bubby lungs. They're bubby lungs. And unlike <laughs> yeah. unlike First Nation cigarettes, which are tax free, these have like a little extra, if you know what I mean. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. 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 Well, we're we, we're there. Yeah. yeah. Jeremy and I can go there. I think. <laughs> I think. Are you both Jewish? Yeah. Okay. You can still yeah. back out of this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not too late to back That's out. Fair. Uh, so, yeah, we're here to talk about um, the best ideas yeah. in film and TV that have never been made, right? And you have a great one, actually. We were talking about it. Mm-hmm. So do you want to just dive into it? Because I really want people to hear this. I think when they hear it, it's going to change everything. I hope so, yeah. yeah. And I like that you're calling it the best because I do like to compare this to, like, the Hollywood scripts that never made it off the blacklist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is, as a Canadian television creator whose shows are consistently canceled after one season, I can promise you that the only reason this hasn't been made is because it's too out there. Not because nobody knows me and taking a risk on me has proven to be a financial (laughs) catastrophe. (laughs) Not because of that. This is the best, this is one of the best ideas that hasn't been made for reasons out of my control. So, um... This uh, is a show that I was developing with Sam Reich at College Humor um, after College Humor became something else. They were like expanding and doing something else and he wanted new sort of short form series, streaming series ideas. And I was like, okay, well, I have this idea, but it's very uh, big and I think prohibitively big and, and prohibitively messy and stupid. And basically it was, um, I wanted to do a parody of a wrestling show like WWE, like a sort of live wrestling event show with all of the storylines with the focus on the storylines. But through the parody, and we would cast real wrestlers to play these characters and the characters would be like, I know the WWE and all those things already have a comedic element, but we would like push it to the moon. And then slowly over the course of releasing this show, we would create a real wrestling league so we would immediately start blurring the lines between what is parody and what is reality. And then we would start having touring events. <laughs> and so that was one prohibitive <laughs> element because like, who knows how to do that? Yeah, you got to book the venues. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then in addition to all that, it was like, it was basically like having four super high budget sketches in a five page script each episode. So each episode would be like five to six minutes but have like one minute scenes that were massive, prohibitively yeah. big, as I said. And so, the steroid yeah. budget too, out of control. And such a big steroid budget, yeah. yeah. And But we would scrimp on having safe disposal <laughs> boxes. We would not have those. <laughs> Never. So we'd save, we'd yeah. pinch pennies there. Um, but yeah, so this was, uh, it was called Real Deal Wrestling. And, uh, and you know, our first match was going to be a divorced, uh, jacked divorced man fighting seven dogs. Uh, the character of his opponent was named Seven Dogs, and it was just Seven Dogs that would be released into the ring and allowed to do whatever those dogs wanted to do. And that match would end with him beating the shit out of a dog. <laughs> and that would be the end of the first match. Yeah, right? Fun um, for the whole family. Fun yeah. for the whole family. And then, you know, by episode two, we would uh, start with immediately, we would have big rubber toys, like the 90s wrestling toys, of the characters you'd seen in episode one. And each episode would start with new toys of the characters. And the universe would be expanding exponentially. So by episode three, we would have like 12 wrestlers, toys for all of them, yeah, commercials for all of them, et cetera, et cetera. This is a very rich and detailed world, I think, for an idea that you know has fallen by the wayside. There's a lot here, I think, to unpack, no? Uh, certainly there's a lot to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> motivation yeah <laughs> where i was at at the time <laughs> well we want to ask about all that stuff i mean where were you at at the time where, when did you start writing this stuff um i guess it would have been the scripts that i uh was looking at and that i showed you guys are from 2017 but it would have been before that because mm. i remember i was this is before i moved in with my girlfriend or before we moved in together so because i have like a <laughs> I have a sense memory of walking around my tiny bachelor apartment uh, pitching this like the Joker pitching his latest crime. And as I said, like every conversation would begin and end with me saying to Sam, this is not doable. So at any point, tell me to pivot to a doable idea. But every conversation would end with us both laughing like, yeah, we both agree. We probably can't do this, but it is fun to talk about. Let's keep talking about it. And then, of course, inevitably, it did not happen. 
Were you were you like always a big wrestling fan as a kid or grown up? Uh, Not a grown up wrestling fan, and that is okay. just one mark against me making this <laughs> show. Uh, but I was as a kid. I loved it as a kid. I was like in the sort of mid Hulk Hogan years era. So I oh, loved yeah. the Ultimate Warrior. I loved Macho Man. Um, and by the time wrestling got good, like really good, like to Generation X, I was out. Like Stone Cold, I was not around for. The Rock, I was not around for. So I was like pre the heyday. What What was it about wrestling that as a kid you connected to? I think I loved the big, huge, jacked dudes beating the hell out of each other. Yeah, I guess I that's the main you, thing. <laughs> I thought, yeah. And my friend had like the toys, the big rubber, like hard, heavy rubber toys that were like a full like foot or two tall yeah like very expensive to produce i would imagine and he had the little ring and we would just smash our toys against each other and then we would wrestle ourselves and i would put him in the boston crab and really hurt his back wow boston crab eh what's yeah. that that's a wrestling move i think chris jericho would do it uh i can't remember who i got it from but you would basically put your friend face you pin him face down yeah and then just like hurl racial epithets at them like boston style yeah or? like boston style yeah, but yeah. it would but in like a crab like also like crab to, yeah you yeah. had to move like a crab yeah, walk, yeah. Crab walk. that's great shouted racism at him wow. uh and you tell him never come back to harvard yeah and then you yeah fill in a those harvard man. kids are notoriously racist yeah, outsiders yeah but uh yeah those are the, those are the racist <laughs> ones we're talking about yeah, when we say yeah, exactly oh for sure uh, but no you'd like put him on his back basically sit on his butt facing away from his head, grab his two ankles, and then pull them back. So you're basically just hyperextending his lower wow. back. Mm -hmm. It's a very painful move. Let's do a little role play here. Okay. Let's say Jeremy and I are two non-Jewish media executives. Oh, I love this. And this is making me more comfortable. Exactly. Already. And you step into an elevator with us. Yeah. And so we were about to deliver the elevator pitch for this awesome idea. Are we going already up or down? I can hear the hum already. Yeah. It, <laughs> so that elevator shaft above us is the elevator we're actually in in this hypothetical. Right. So Jeremy and I walk on. Obviously, we've got our yarmulkes on full blown. Oh, wait, wait. Can I you say we were non -Jewish. Oh, are, did I say that? You did say that. You okay. said non-Jewish, but that's I right, like no, picturing two non-Jewish executives wearing yarmulkes. No, but yarmulkes. that's true. No, but I, I yeah, we're wearing the yarmulkes full-blown, but we're actually non-Jewish. Yeah. And so like, you It's walk like a Tootsie in. situation where to make it, we had to get them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We went full-blown. I married a Hasidic when we had eight children so that I could get, you know, that thing greenlit. Oh, wow. And it just snowballed from there. Right. But this is all useless backstory. So the point being, you step into this elevator with two ripped, hot, yarmulke-wearing, non-Jewish media executives. Okay, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm there. <laughs> Pitch us this show. Right. And is the elevator rushing towards the ground speed style? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's called Real Deal Wrestling. And fellas, you're going to love this. Two jacked individuals like you are going to connect to this and might even have a, there might even be a couple roles for you. Oh, what a mitzvah that would be. <laughs> yeah. And don't worry, the roles I'm referring to are non-kosher. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, each episode, we... Oh boy, this pitch is <laughs> falling apart. It's okay. <laughs> We're very forgiving people. Each episode, we have all the things you love about an hour-long or 90-minute-long wrestling broadcast condensed into five minutes. We introduce five to 12 epi uh, wrestlers each episode. We have toys. We have commercials. It's too expensive to make. The guys are too jacked. We see uh, our, the, our first re uh, wrestler commit suicide by the end of our second episode. And by the third episode, our main wrestler is his son who wants revenge. Not on, the, uh, not on anyone in particular. He wants revenge not on like a ring opponent, but on the therapist who failed his dad with talk therapy. And there's also seven dogs. What do we think, fellas? <laughs> I think I'm buying it before we even get to the ground floor. Immediate green light. Yeah. Immediate green light. All right. So this is great. There's, again, a lot to unpack here. I want to start with the dogs, though. Okay. Seven dogs is the name of one of the wrestlers. That's right. But there are also seven real dogs. Seven real dogs. Yeah. 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 Why? Um, well, I come from a long line of random comedians. Mm. <laughs> I, I cut my teeth on E-Bomb's world. Oh, nice. So, yeah. who's to say, really? But uh, if you're asking that question, I'm doing my job. Yeah. I like the dogs, and I liked all the other characters as well. Jeremy and I read the three scripts that you, oh, uh, thank you very much sent over yesterday. They're fantastic. I'm sure Why it took we... you all of eight minutes. I, I, did, I went slow. I wanted to savor it. Nice. Yeah, it took me 17 hours. I went hours. super fast. I, I was barely even reading the words. Yeah, but, but that's... Jeremy, but I enjoyed it. Jeremy's known for his speed and 
Anyway, yeah. we won't get into that. But I'm the only script writer with the balls to include lots and lots of pictures in his script. Yeah, it was <laughs> I, great. It made Hand it much drawn. easier for me. I appreciate <laughs> it. I liked how uh, the first script didn't have a title page because there was clearly just, you know, like dashed off, just get it out on the page. And then the second and third script, they had title pages, dates, draft numbers. Like, this is getting serious. If I may say, that was an error on my part. So I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> including the title pages or not? Not including it? the first one. Because nice. okay. I had to change something in one of them. Mm. I had to tweak it. Mm. 2023 style. So, okay, another little detail I noticed. Episodes two and three have a theme song. Yep. And I want to make sure I'm getting the lyrics right. Okay. It's time to rock. It's time to ride all night. It's time for real. It's time for fight. All right. Yeah. It's time for, ah, uh, there's like five, six lines of just, ah. Uh, yeah. And then it ends on, and make it ride, oh yeah. Yeah, so that's episode two. Yeah, and then yeah. episode three, we've got still same deal. It's time to rock. It's time to ride all night. It's time for real. It's time for fight, all right. It's time for, ah, uh, like six, seven lines of, ah. Uh. But then the last line is not the same. It's, and make it ride a bit. Yeah. So mm. tell us more. There's not much to say. I like tweaking it. I like um, just seeing where that'll go. And uh, I may have just forgotten uh, how the theme song went. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, I noticed also the wife's name changes. Oh, does well, it? Well, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, we don't know the first time he yells the name. It specifically says it could be his wife, it could be one of his mm. kids, or it could just be something he We'll yells. get to that. What is it though. first, and then what is it next? I believe it's... Janet at first? Or Janine? No, yeah, it's, he yells Janine in episode one, and then oh, later yeah, episodes, Janet. she's Janet. Yeah. I prefer Janine. I'm going to make it Janine. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I like also, though, in the song, it's kind of why, why the a bit works for me is it's, it's you know, zagging when you'd expect a zig or whatever. It's, it's the opposite of, often in comedy, we talk about heightening, mm-hmm. and, and I think it's kind of a de-heightening. So it, it, oh, it, I am Toronto's premier uh, anti-climax comedian. <laughs> You yeah. hate climaxes. Yeah, you just I won't do them. it. Yeah, yeah, I edge. You're edging the audience for sure. I'm an edging comic. Yeah. I like to take them right to the precipice of a punchline and, and then, then reveal it. that I have not quite written one yet. Actually, Incredible. that puts me in line with most Toronto <laughs> comedians. <laughs> it's a fair assessment. These are real wrestlers, right, in yes. the show? They're, yeah. So they're real people. Yeah. And they're, they happen to be amateur wrestlers, right? Yeah, yeah, whoever we could hire. Okay. And then in the first script, it says that several of them are also criminals. How does that all work? Well, that's in the that's for the sake of the like that's the fiction of it. Gotcha. Yeah, the characters okay, okay. are criminals. The, the characters, the actors. I see. Are. Yeah. You, you were going to do extensive background checks, I assume. Uh, that wasn't a plan of mine, but I was definitely just going to ask them and take them at their word. Sure, that's the way to go. I think. And, and what about the dogs? If those dogs had a bad background, I would not have had the wherewithal to check. Fair. There's I would a, not have known. Were you thinking of a specific breed of dog, or? Uh, no. Okay, ask and answer, I guess. Yeah, but are they? Let's this, move on. <laughs> are they? Are they one breed? Yeah, feel free to not answer any of these questions. No, I was thinking total multiple amateurs. breeds. Yeah. Multiple breeds. Yeah, yeah. So I like don't want UN. there to be any illusion that this is like some sort of a pack, mm, a yeah. regular pack. This is just seven individual dogs who have been been brought together to wrestle. And are, and to be clear, they're not like tied together, like to pull a sled or anything. They're just loose dogs. Loose dogs. Yeah. So again, this this TV show, the whole world is in this fake real wrestling league. Yes. Um, where did you see the show going? Like over the course of a season, what kind of arcs would we have? What kind of character journeys would we be brought on? Um, well, I'm trying to think of, I did not think it through. Good. So uh, the arc that we have from episode one to three is mostly focused around our first wrestler, Carl Walker, yeah. who is upset about his divorce and his custody and being evicted also. Mm-hmm. Losing custody, I should say, and being evicted also. And... Uh, and then he wins his fight against seven dogs. But then in the second episode, I believe, he finds out his wife is getting remarried. And then he bursts into the wedding and realizes she's marrying seven dogs in tuxedos. And then he uh, he frantically calls his therapist. And then his therapist is a wrestler also mm-hmm. who delivers calming words to him in the style of a wrestling interview. But tells him basically that his schedule is full for that week. Yeah. Then in episode three, Carl has died at his own hand, and the priest, who is also a wrestler, is delivering a eulogy where he wants revenge against someone. That's unclear. And then his son turns out he's going to be a wrestler now, and he's going to avenge his father and try and take down the therapist uh, with the help of his best friend, the cool kid in school, Taylor, Taylor, and a pack of 10-year-olds. Taylor's great. Also a smoker. He should read the magic book, no? Oof. 
So I wanted to ask you just on the, the question or the topic of this sun. Yes. Okay, and I want to make sure I'm getting this right. So there, we're going to talk to people about great ideas, and they'll have not been made for a whole variety of reasons. Some of them will have been unmakeable. So for this, this show, what was it that made it unmakeable? Was it because at one point you had an adult male wrestler bend a 10-year-old boy over his knee in front of a, an arena full of spectators and deliver, and I'm quoting the script here, a series of firm spankings to his young bottom? No, I think that part would have been easy to make. Mm. Um, we just would have had to use like maybe flesh-colored trousers on the boy and do some blurring. Yeah, or um, stunt butt. Yeah, stunt butt. I think the harder part would have been seven dogs released in a sort of wild frenzy and being fought legitimately by a grown man. Yeah, And then also a stadium full of spectators that would all presumably have to be paid extras. And then... Uh, also um, having suicide in the second episode mm. and needing to rent a church and having to get tuxedos for seven dogs. All of those things I think would be harder. And plus a cast of, by episode three, I want to say 45. Wrestlers? Cast of 45 all in. wrestlers and children. Yeah. Not, not including them. dogs. Yeah. yeah, and there's a, the old Hollywood ad, you never work with kids or animals. And this has and a lot both. of both of them. Yeah. So. Oh, I may have read that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the adage I read was, kids, animals, let's rock and roll. Yeah. I like that one better. Only kids, that's only animals. <laughs> that's much more yeah. fun. But I, I also like that, that this series uh, and live event, um, it, it kind of touches on a lot of themes that I think are, are really interesting and important. You know, you got religion in there. Mm-hmm. You got uh, mental health, of course. Um, you know, legacy and like living up to your, your parents' uh I mean, I'm just going to say the word legacy again because I can't think of a different word. Mm-hmm. Um, You're the only leg I see. Oh, thank you. So what, what do you think like about this idea would connect with people? Like, what, do you, I guess my question is, like, do you think it, were you going just for the comedy or do you think people would get really into the actual you know, stakes of it, the, the matches? The... In my dream of dreams, people would get into it on every level. But I've had this experience before where I parodied a genre and hoped to get comedy fans and fans of that genre in a legitimate way. And the real fans of the genre immediately saw how much distaste I had for the genre (laughs) and that the parody was coming from a pretty mean place. Yeah. And for some reason did not connect with that. This this one's coming from, I think, a a place of what? Nostalgia and homage, right? Yeah, I like yeah, wrestling. Yeah, I definitely have no love for adult wrestling fans or the adult wrestling culture. Mm. Um, I think it's fine as like a uh, embarrassing guilty pleasure habit that people keep quiet about. But um, the culture of like proudly talking about being an adult wrestling fan is. Uh, not good and yeah. not welcome in my life. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> that being said. I do like the 90s wrestling energy, and mm. I like uh, dogs. <laughs> Why don't we do a quick sort of tour of the cast of wrestlers in your show? Okay, We've been yeah. We've talking about all these real wrestlers. Why don't we talk about some real deal wrestlers, starting with the, um, with the instantly memorable Carl Walker. Yes, that's yeah, the first guy. A we tragic made. figure. Mm-hmm. I, I started this episode reading it. it was, it's very funny, as, as we'll hear in a minute, but the Carl Walker arc is actually tortured and sad and yes. it made me cry oh shit yeah. i'm sorry it made me cry a lot but actually after i cried it out i started laughing a lot too oh which good. is a weird thing that never says happened. a lot about you i think i think so so okay carl walker is he based on anyone is he you are you based on carl walker i'm not carl walker but carl oh, okay. walker is loosely based on all of the wrestlers in the 90s who would just be like have like a normal guy's name okay. and just show up to the ring for like one match to get the shit kicked out of them <laughs> by like a star. And I feel like at a certain point they realized that they could just make every match between stars. They would never mm, have to okay. have these like shitty little like Kevin. Kevin. So just Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> hey, Kevin. It's Kevin. Just beating suburban dad up. But it was fun in those days to like wish for one of those guys to make it big. And I feel like a couple wrestlers like uh this isn't exactly a perfect parallel but i feel like the one two three kid who was kind of a sacrificial lamb became x pac member of degeneration x Whoa. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a good come up for him and then of course he made his sex tape with china whoa not the wrestler oh uh, okay 
And this uh, is the country. Yeah. There's, there's so much lingo here that's just going over my head. Uh, did you never M- watch wrestling? M- M- no, no. Oh, well, you just know to ends. Generation X from when they went, suck it. Remember that? that? Well, I know that because kids would do that in the real world, exactly. right? Just yeah. right in your face. Yeah, back in the 90s, a lot of kids were telling people to, to suck, suck it. it. Yeah. Why don't kids do that now? <laughs> uh, okay, other characters. The Daddy and Cooper Dent, is that the guy's oh, name? Oh, yeah. yeah. So those are the two announcers, Cooper yeah. Dent and the Daddy. Mm-hmm. And Cooper Dent is your standard play-by-play announcer, and the Daddy is, um, I guess, the ongoing commentary about how things that are happening uh, do not cohere to a wrestling event. Mm. He's very confused throughout. He's confused. But he's, he's, a, a, he's a very old man. I'm picturing old? me. Yeah. I'm the oldest man we can get who could still act intense. Wow. So I think we could get like an 80-year-old who could be that intense. Throughout the casting call. So these two announcers, are they also real people doing this, or are they actors brought in just for this role? Um, I don't know. I guess they would be like real actors. Nice. Okay. They would sit ringside, like WWE style, and they would commentate throughout the match. Yeah. yeah. I like them a lot. I mean, I, I mean, I'm curious why the daddy is called the daddy, but maybe hey, just if you have to not? ask, you don't want to know. That's right. Yeah. Do you want to read read a couple of the uh, Cooper Dent and the Daddy lines? What are their first lines there? Because yeah, I'm trying to that. remember their rapport. They have a very good rapport. I feel like Cooper's quite deferential to the daddy. Oh, Cooper loves the daddy. Yeah. yeah. Now, and can I ask, also on the sort of the uh, announcing team, there's a, a the maybe not the one female character, but the one... Uh, yeah, one of two. Yeah, sure. Um, do you think, like, if you were to do it now, obviously this was written about, would you say, like five years ago or so? Yeah. Uh, and now we're much more aware of, of, like, gender parity and that type of thing. Do you think there would be more... Female wrestlers, if you were, I would say one less. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I might just maybe get rid of those one those lines from Bev Turk and hand them to like a guy. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, so let's get into some other wrestlers. There's a an, a wrestler in episode two called Porno. Porno, yeah. yeah. So Porno is a porn, a former porn star who's also who's now uh, wrestles and still does porn, and he. Um, He's a fun character. He is, uh, he's sort of like a Shawn Michaels style sexy boy, except saying the subtext loud, mm. as loud as possible. And his intro video is, uh, f- you know, 30 to 60 seconds of hardcore graphic pornography. Um, and uh, th- that's all I, I need as well. But it's, yeah. it's, it's tactfully censored, right? So this could go on CBC, just you would have the censored bits. Oh, out, this right? was created for Jim. So, mm, yeah. uh, for CBC Kids, Gem, right? E- okay, no. Wow. <laughs> wow. Over the line. I don't know. Get this That's guy the, the line pod. for me. That's fine. Um, so, porno. And then, yeah, I think the end of porno's match against. Who's he fighting? Oh, he's fighting Rude Hitler. Yeah. And the end of uh, porno's match is um, he pulls a cell phone out of a bag, like Jake the Snake Roberts pulling a snake out of a bag. He pulls his cell phone out, calls up his friends, and then some other porn stars arrive and they film a porno on the yeah. unconscious body of Root Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the end of that, that match. They have sex on his passed out body. Is that yes, right? that's right. And this is on TV. It, it is nice, though, like the idea that you have friends that would just show up at a moment's notice and do that type of thing for <laughs> is that, you. Is that They're okay? already all oiled up and jacked and <laughs> running to the ring. Uh, what other wrestlers have we got here? There's porno, there's Rude Hitler. I'm just Rude Hitler, uh, Hitler but rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you to explain that because by the name, it's like unclear exactly well, we'll what's going that. on. Also, once we're pointing out <laughs> errors in the script, uh, I believe at first he's, or one time he's introduced as Mean Hitler. Yeah, he's briefly Mean Hitler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I didn't like that. <laughs> that, was, that was a step too far. Yeah, so he's Rude Hitler and nobody really cares that he's Hitler, but they do care when he says things like America can kiss my butt. Yeah. Then yeah. they boo. Then they boo like crazy. And I think there's one moment where he pulls out an American flag and then slowly turns it upside down and people go freaking yeah that's yeah, the yeah, worst thing do, you can do yeah. I, I wonder if uh, i mean one aspect you talked about this is it's not just the story you know it's the the toy line it's the live events uh do you do you think like i remember toys where they would have a little knob on the back and you do it and it would move their arm do you think like the spanking version would be a, a toy itself or yeah that would be cool yeah i'd love to have uh, one toy that doesn't spank yeah and then yeah one okay. that does spank yeah well, let's maybe let's make a little quick detour on the toys. Okay. So there are commercials throughout this show mm-hmm. because you decide to merch the fuck out of it, which is great. Yeah. So tell us about that. Well, um, yeah, they're like big, heavy rubber toys, like I said, and uh, and I guess some of them might be plastic to make room for the spanking idea, sure. which I like. I think some of them have a pull string that uh, you can, uh, or like a button on the back that you can make them speak. 
I can't remember what they say, but I'm sure it's very funny. And uh, yeah, that's it. Every episode has like a toy, right? That's being pushed out. Every episode has as many toys as there were wrestlers introduced in the previous episode. Gotcha. And yeah. then sometimes the toys are sour cream. Well, that's separate. That's a product. So we do mm, also okay. merchandise, real deal wrestling, sour cream. Yeah. The sourest sour cream on the market. And I got to say, rereading the scripts, I was not a fan of that bit. <laughs> <laughs> that bit might get changed. If, uh... You're going to cut that now after several years of consider. I'm just wondering, like, how far along in talks with the various, like, manufacturers did you get? Like, I'm assuming the you approached. Cream. Yeah, you yeah. must have approached sour cream manufacturers with these scripts and said, here yeah. you go. What do you think? If, if, uh, if pitching a show is a 100-meter dash... And uh, and the hunt and crossing the finish line is getting the show made. I was not invited to the race. Right. So that is how far I got with every element of this. No merchandisers were contacted. No companies. There was never any actual discussion about the costs. That's tragic in my mind, anyway. Yes. Yeah. Because we need shows like this made, don't we? Yeah. I think we can all agree. We. Need I think shows definitely like this. it fills a need. A sort of social need. It's yeah. to imagine if this had come out in 2017 when it when it was written, how different the world would be now. Well, how how would it have been different? Well, if, had I this think, been made, I think we'd be seeing fewer Ukrainian flags on homes. Okay, and the reason for that is something for you to infer on <laughs> <Yeah>. your own. <laughs> Just sure. fine. The audience will connect the dots. But I think the world would have been a quite different place now had this been made. Yeah, maybe this is the right spot them to invite you to read your own script with us. Okay. Are you down for that? I'd love to. We want to read the pilot because it's really funny and we think people will enjoy hearing it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do that right after this break. Sure. Cool. Real Deal Wrestling, episode one. We open on a hard rock track and aggressive cuts of wrestlers flexing, wrestlers slamming each other, fans going bananas, fans screaming at the camera, fans body slamming each other, dogs barking, nuclear explosions, a man stuck in traffic, etc. All of that is intercut with the aggressive narration and periodic on-screen text of a monster truck ad. You wanted real, you got real. The real deal wrestling league is here and it's ready to shit your ass. The camera zooms in on a little kid screaming. <laughs> ah! It's an all-new wrestling league featuring the meanest, angriest, realest wrestlers performing death-defying stunts of questionable morality. A wrestler lies on the mat while another wrestler climbs to the top rope, pulls out a gun, and starts firing. Some of these wrestlers are borderline criminals. Hold the borderline. Hold the sum. Hold the of. Hold the wrestlers. All together now. Booming block text. These are criminals. A college professor gives the middle finger to his students. <laughs> You, <laughs> you won't believe the people we're putting in the ring. Everyone from beer-guzzling assholes to little kids. A pack of little kids bark and scream at a scared old man stuck in a tree. <laughs> so leave your mind, crotch, and ass at home unless you want them to get blown, blown, and blown. A dog morphs into an electric guitar and a wrestler shreds on it. Because the real deal wrestling league starts now. Cut to... Interior, venue, ringside, night. The crowd screams as we enter a relatively small venue packed with sign-waving yahoos. The signs are all vague because no one's met any of our wrestlers yet. So they say things like, wrestling, criminals, and shit my ass. Light strobe and a heavy rock song fills the venue as two announcers sit courtside narrating the event. They are Cooper Dent, 30s, 40s, and The Daddy, very old. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the dawn of professional wrestling's next age. Just as men evolve from apes or whatever, so too shall the world of wrestling evolve from this inaugural broadcast of the Real Deal Wrestling League. I'm Cooper Dent, and with me is the Daddy. Daddy, what can we expect from tonight? Cooper, I'm already... Uh, Cooper, I'm completely in the dark about this thing, and there's no light switch in sight. I'm a scared old man scrambling for answers, and the sooner you move on from me, the better. Well, there you have it. From humble beginnings, we all hope this will grow to be the biggest wrestling league on the planet. And it all starts in the ring. So without further ado, let's meet our first wrestler. The venue lights dim as an intro video plays on the big screen. Intro video. A new pumping rock song kicks in over Super 8 home video footage of a man and woman getting married. Till death do us part. These words echo as we cut to the man and woman playing with their kids in the backyard. Forever. More echoes. Then forever, we cut to the man forever. and woman in a fight. I'm sorry. 
Finally, a rubber stamp hits a form. It says, divorced. Then another stamp hits another form. Custody denied. And a third stamp, also evicted. Finally, the screen displays his name, Carl Walker. Fireworks go, off, fireworks go off as Carl enters the arena. He's a jacked 40-year-old dressed like a classic suburban dad. Khakis, golf shirt, newspaper in hand. Tears stream down his face as he screams. Ah! And it looks like our first wrestler is Carl Walker, a recently divorced man who lost custody and was evicted. He's a big boy, looks about 40. He's crying, he's screaming, he's confused. I'm confused. Let's rock and roll! Carl enters the ring and grabs a mic from the referee. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life and it cost me my wife and kids. Now I'm living at the YMCA and no disrespect, but it's not ideal. That being said, wrestling is how I put food on the table and I'm ready to fucking eat. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> One person holds up what looks like a hastily written sign. I'm ready to fucking eat. Looks like Carl Walker's already made some fans here tonight. So let's meet his opponent. Cut back to the video screen. Intro video two. An insane heavy metal song plays over a video of a bunch of dogs barking and running around in a yard, on a sidewalk, in a house, on a bus, etc. The name comes up. Seven dogs. Seven actual dogs rush into the venue, barking and running around without any clear purpose. The dogs. Some, trainer tries to, uh, some trainers try to wrangle them. And here comes Carl Walker's opponent. Seven dogs. Holy hell, it's just a bunch of dogs. The ref rings the bell, but the dogs still aren't in the ring. The referee has rung the bell, and we are officially underway. But don't tell that to seven dogs who have yet to make it to the ring. Who knows what those dogs are thinking or what they're even doing here in the first place? The dogs continue to mill about. Carl Walker stands in the ring, screaming at the dogs to come get some. And Carl Walker now screaming at the dogs to come get some. Daddy, he's fired up. He misses his wife, he misses his kids, and he's ready to take it out on some dogs. Carl Walker exits the ring and grabs a dog. Finally, Carl Walker pulling one of seven dogs into the ring with him to try to get something going. And it bit him. The dog bit him. Carl has lost his mind. Carl starts beating the actual shit out of the dog. We've switched to a fake dog. Now. I meant to cut that part. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't wrestling, it's carnage. And that's not a guy, it's a dog. The other six dogs of seven dogs seemingly oblivious to the pounding dog number seven is taking. One of those dogs is taking a shit in the corner. I can't believe it. That's a true blue dog right there. We see a dog squatting in the corner of the ring. And look at this. Carl's got the dog pinned now. The referee drops to the mat. One, two, three, it's over. Ding, ding, ding. The bell rings uh, a bunch as the referee raises Carl's hand in the air. Carl Walker has defeated seven dogs and is our first ever municipal champion. The referee attaches a championship belt to Carl's waist as the dog he pinned gets up and runs back off the stage. Carl Walker is crying again and screaming into the void. Janine! Gotta think that's the name of his wife or his kid or maybe one of the dogs or just something he yells when he's happy or sad. Who knows? And our own Bev Turk is on hand now with another brand new addition to our Real Deal Wrestling League roster. Let's have a peek. Interior, venue, hallway, continuous. Reporter Bev Turk is standing in a hallway in front of an RDW banner with Rude Hitler, a wrestler dressed like Hitler but with cartoonishly evil eyebrows taped over his regular eyebrows and a little pointy chin beard to complement his mustache. Guys, I'm here with one of the Real Deal Wrestling League's hottest news stars, Rude Hitler, and he's... Give me that. He grabs the mic away from her. Bev gasps. <gasps> That's right. It's me, Rude Hitler. And I've got a message for you, Carl Walker. I hope you like wearing your pants around your ankles, because I'm going to take your belt. You think I'm going to roll over as easy as seven dogs? Ha! Huh? When I'm done with you, you're going to need to buy a pair of suspenders from the mall, perhaps, because I'm going to take your belt. And another thing, the moment our match is done, Carl Walker, you're going to have to head down to the police station and file a missing persons report. <laughs> you're going This is so stupid. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and another thing, the moment our match is done, Carl Walker, you're going to have to head down to the police station and file a missing persons report. The police will ask you to identify the person who is missing. You'll say, they're big, they're beautiful, and they're made of leather and gems. The police will ask if you're describing a belt. <laughs> You'll say, yeah. They'll say, that's more of a theft issue. 
you'll say, okay, well, then I'd like to report the theft of my belt because I'm going to take your belt. Suck my dick, America. I'm rude Hitler. Harsh words from rude Hitler. Guys? Interior ringside continuous. The crowd is booing this interview on the video screen. <laughs> Harsh words indeed, rude Hitler. Making enemies quickly in the real deal wrestling league. One audience member is holding up a sign that says, suck your own dang dick. You said it, Cooper. This Hitler is rude. Daddy, as you know, real deal wrestling offers not only hot pounding action in the ring, but the realest experience outside it, including invasive surveillance of all our wrestlers. So let's have a look at Carl Walker to see what he's up to after his dramatic win. Interior showers continuous. Carl Walker sits in the shower, knees pulled up to his chest, screaming. Cut back to interior venue ringside continuous. Chilling stuff. That, my friends, is a man with demons. Hard to know where those demons will lead him, but odds are it's to the grave. Well said, Daddy. That's all for episode one of Real Deal Wrestling. Join us next time to meet more wrestlers and get even more real. On behalf of the Daddy, I'm Cooper Dent saying sweet dreams. Wow. Perfect. Wow. wow. I mean, it really I jumps off the page, doesn't it? You can, all, you can almost taste... Uh, the producers saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I love how much screaming there is in general, too. And crying, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's always, this is so good. I can't believe this isn't a real thing. But it is now, I guess. We just made it real, didn't we? We made it real. Does this count as making this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someday. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got made. What a depressing reality, but you can't deny it. Take wow. it. I feel like we've really t together birthed this thing into the world. Yeah, thank you guys yeah. for uh, giving voice to this. Yeah, yeah. to yeah. the voiceless scripts of, of the world. That's what we're here to do. Mark. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that was really funny. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you heard so funny that I couldn't even read certain lines. <laughs> couldn't get through that rude yeah. Hitler mono. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, just uh, <laughs> the details of every little thing the cops would say was getting to me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, th that was... I mean, great, and uh, as David and I have said before, we've read the other two episodes, and it only gets more insane from there. Yeah, and it's pretty uh, wild. and then what more can you ask for 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 anything really? <sighs> yeah. Well, you know what? I uh, I was looking through it when after I sent it to you guys, it, it forced me to read it, and then I was like, all right, listen, I know this isn't makeable, but I at the very least want to see. So I've sent it out to <laughs> to wow. my to my agent. <laughs> And a guy I work with, a producer I work with sometimes, I'm expecting no response at all. I'm expecting them to treat it like I'm having a manic episode. <laughs> but if there is a response, I'll let you know. Yeah, let us yeah, know so we can take we'll... down the pod. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. The pod lives. I honestly, I would, I would be or gasmically happy if this does get made and we do get a call saying guys great podcast <laughs> yeah. episode but we're premiering next sunday you gotta take it down today yeah How's our new that? wrestler cease and desist <laughs> yeah. to tag team that's right yeah. amazing well i hope to see this maybe somewhere in the real world someday with real wrestlers um real divorcees and real tears oh god right? that's what it's all about yeah that would be right. sick yeah yeah <laughs> And that was Mark Little, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, what an interview. Yeah, what an interview. What a scene. What a great guy. Great app. I think we all learned a lot of lessons today. I know I did. Jeremy, did you learn any lessons today? I did. I learned to always believe in myself and never believe what the little man in my skull says. Very good. And I learned to always follow the mustache man into the candy van. Nice. Yeah, I love candy. And you know what else I love? What? Games. Whoa. And that's why it's time for an all-new, exclusive, unseen podcast game. And it's called Wrestling, Real or Fake. Whoa. David, are you ready to play? This is so on theme. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Okay, how this game works is pretty simple. I'm going to give you two wrestlers. I'll give you a little description of them, and you tell me which one is real and which one is fake. Now, as previously established, you know nothing about wrestling. You didn't watch it as a kid. I didn't really either, but I did do some pretty good Googling yeah. earlier, so I think we're, we're ready to go. Go for it. All right, round one. Your first wrestler is Erwin R. Scheister, a.k.a. IRS, a briefcase carrying, shirt, tie, and suspender wearing wrestler who accuses his opponents of being, quote, tax cheats or tree killer, an anti environment madman who enters the ring carrying an axe and littering. Tell me which one is real and which one is fake. I think Irvin Scheister is real. Irwin R. Scheister. 
aka IRS, and you are correct. That was the real one. So you've got one point on the board, and we're moving into our Damn. second round. Killing it. In this round, we have the Spanish Inquisitor, a Hispanic wrestler who wears a Riddler-esque suit covered in question marks, or Papa Shango, a witch doctor who uses voodoo magic and spells against his opponents. Damn, I mean, if that first one is real, it is in poor taste. The second one in slightly less poor taste, but I do think the second one is real. And you're two for two. You're killing it here. But will you continue to kill it? Fucking OJ over here. Yeah. (laughs) Will you continue to kill it in this third round where we see Principal Stuart Payne, a school administrator who moonlights as a wrestler, and he taunts his opponents by threatening to give them detention. Or... Doink the Clown, a circus clown in full makeup with a predilection for inflicting pain. I think Doink the Clown is real. Wow, three for three. You sure you didn't watch wrestling? I'm 100% positive. All right, and now this next round, we have the Gobbledygooker, a turkey-themed wrestler who emerges from a giant egg, versus Sister Sinister, a male wrestler who wears a nun's habit and prays to Satan. At first, when you said turkey style, I thought you meant like, you know, Ottoman kind of guy, but sure. you're talking about the fowl, right? Yeah, yeah, the large bird. Okay, then that guy's real for sure. Yes, he is. Oh, shit. You are four for four. <laughs> you're killing it here. And now we enter the final round. What do I get if I get all five right? Uh, confidence. Okay. Yeah. Great, just what I need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, well, we'll see if you, if you make it a clean sweep here in this last round where we have Chef Death an all-black-wearing chef-slash-wrestler who seasons his opponents with salt and pepper before doing his finishing move, versus Just Joe, a Canadian wrestler with no notable persona at all, except for the fact that his name is Joe. I think the second one is real, Just Joe. Five for five. Wow. Wow, what a a debut here for uh, our our game segment. Yeah. That was a fun game. We're going to be doing that every week. Uh, Well, I think we'll do it some weeks. Uh... And sometimes we will, and it'll depend on time, depend on the subject, and, uh, yeah, it'll depend on how lazy I am and whether I've come up with a game or not. Yeah, and, and also how much uh, airtime we need to fill. Luckily, this week's interview with Mark was so riveting that we didn't really have to cut any of it out, um, and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Why don't we tell the good folks at home where they can find Mark Little and what of his they should be watching? Sure. So, uh, yeah, you can follow Mark online on Instagram. I believe he's at Mark underscore Little underscore comedy uh, or on TikTok at Mark Little Comedy. Yeah, docs him up. Um, And uh, as we mentioned earlier, Mark currently has a show streaming on Amazon Bezos in Canada. I think it might stream on Hulu in the States. I don't know. Use Google. It's called Bezos and his Demons. Uh, close. It's called Gary and His Demons. It's a very funny animated show. And, of course, if you live in Toronto, you can catch Mark live every Friday at Comedy Bar with his show, Good Stuff. They should call that show Good Time because that's what it is. You'll have a great time. I was at that show a few weeks ago. It was fantastic. So thank you, Mark Little, for appearing on the show. And thank you, listener, for listening. We really appreciate it. And we'll be back every first and third Wednesday of the month. We will be dropping new episodes. And we'd really appreciate it if you'd come along for the ride with us. And it'll be quite the ride because we've got great guests lined up for you, including uh, the guest for our next episode. David, why don't you tell us who that is? Sure, BAFTA-winning screenwriter and producer Gail Renard. Oh, wow. That sounds great. I look forward to it. Yeah, me too. And you should as well. You can also look forward to us on the internets on various social media platforms like Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, Facebook, and I think that's it. You can probably figure out our handle. And also, if you're feeling generous and you feel like enabling our Kim Jong-un style addiction to various Swiss cheeses, please do uh, hop onto the Patreon, patreon.com slash unseen podcast, and maybe chip in, maybe don't, up to you. We'll be here, whether or not you do. We'd really appreciate it. For now, all you're doing is supporting the show, and that means a lot to us. And in the future, we're going to try to give you some extra stuff there, some little goodies. Some tickles, um, as we call them. Yeah, but we'll, we'll keep you posted on those tickles as they get tickled, I guess. That's right. So stay tuned for the next episode of Unseen Podcast coming out two weeks from now. But for now, stop listening, because this is the end of the show. <laughs>